Hi, I'm Matt Johnson and this is my second video in a three-part series that I've created on building your own elements for an outdoor Christmas light show. In this video I'm going to show you how to build one of these matrix trees out of materials that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Building a pixel tree such as this one is actually not very complicated but it does require several steps. I found to simplify the process creating a jig will help in ensuring that they're both consistent and it holds everything in place while you are putting it together. The pixel tree is fabricated from only two basic elements. The first is a floral wreath wire frame which I purchased at Hobby Lobby. You could get it at other craft stores. And the second are these small steel rods which are actually used for drop frame ceilings and can be purchased at Home Depot. You could get 50 of them in a pack for $17. With 50, you can build at least three trees. So these are some examples of the materials used in the tree. This is the smaller floral wreath frame. Like I said, I purchased it at Hobby Lobby. It cost $1.99, fairly inexpensive. And this is a larger one, the exact same thing, it's $4.99. This one's a little bit larger than the tree that I have here on my left. I use it for the trees that are a little bit taller. This one here is using a wreath wire frame that's just a little bit smaller in size than the one you see here. Here's an example of some of the rods that are used for the vertical members to hold the pixels in place. As I said before, at Home Depot, you can buy these rods in a pack of 50 for $17. In order to simplify construction of the pixel tree, I needed to create a jig that would hold both the top and bottom wire frame rings in place. To do that, I took some 2x4s and I simply created a jig base, so you can see, by cutting them into a cross shape and then putting some wire staples at the locations where each of the different size base rings would be in order to hold it centered and keep it still while I'm attaching the vertical rods. So once I've created the base of the jig, I then take the larger wreath wire frame and I secure it to the jig by putting zip ties around the wire staple and around the wire frame. That'll keep it positioned perfectly in the center of the jig. I've then fabricated the vertical part of the jig using a closet rod or you could use a curtain rod or any other kind of pipe that has the diameter that um, will keep it secure but will also be adjustable so that you can make it the height that you want for the tree that you're creating. I then put that pole in the middle and on the top of the pole I've created a small MDF block that has a couple of pieces of steel going across with some holes that I used to zip tie the smaller wire frame in place and hold that perfectly centered. I then place that here and now I have the two rings secured so they will not move while I begin the process of putting in the vertical rods. So the next step is putting in each of the rods that make up the vertical components that hold the pixels in place on the tree. To do that I take each rod, I slide it through the top ring and through the bottom ring and then I take and weld at each intersection I will tack weld the rod to hold it into place. For the purpose of demonstration, I've added a few more of these vertical rods just to give you an idea of the process that I go through. Once I have the vertical rods in place, I will then secure them by tack welding them with my Lincoln MIG welder at both the top and the bottom. 
This will keep them in perfect alignment vertically while I put the rings, which you see in the middle here, in place. Those rings are actually just these rods bent in a 360 degree circle to hold it and give it a little bit more stability and a little bit more rigidity. Once that's done, I add a separate second vertical rod next to each of the primary ones and I've created this jig here with two grooves about the, the width of the rod. I will put the first rod in the groove and then I will take the second rod and put it in the second groove. This spacing is important because it's the correct spacing in order to slide a pixel right in between the two. I'll show you that in the next step. Once I've completed putting all of the vertical rods in place, I verify my spacing using the jig, and then I finish welding them in place by tacking them at each of the locations where it touches either the cross member or the top or the bottom. I then use a hacksaw to cut all of the excess from the rods off the top and make it flush. Once that's done, I can remove the tree from the jig and I'm ready to begin putting pixels in it. The pixels that I've chosen for my trees are these square type. They're WS 2811s. I'll post a link to them. I purchased them from Ray Wu. I like these because they fit just right between each of the rods. I then use a zip tie around each pixel to snug it into place. Once the pixel has been snug, I then use a spacer, which I created just from a piece of plastic that I drilled some holes in at an even distribution. And I use that by placing it over the first pixel and simply moving up and down each of the other pixels until they all pop through the holes in the spacing jig. Once the spacing is right, then I will securely tighten the zip tie so it no longer moves. So once the pixels have been secured in the tree, I just verify that each row is evenly spaced and that every pixel is aligned in that row. This is especially important for different types of effects where if they are not aligned you can see it look jagged or zigzagged. I also will solder on the connectors that link back to my controller. I use two connectors and I daisy chain four rows of pixels for every one strand. The reason that I do this is to simplify the number of outputs that are required on the controller. For most controllers for pixels, if they're 12 volt pixels, you can support up to about 170 lights before you need to worry about adding a new strand. Another thing that I've done is at the end of each strand, I take the power wires and I link them back to the plug so that there's power traveling to both ends of the strand. This ensures that the first pixel is just as bright as the last pixel in the strand to give a more constant look across the whole tree. So once all the pixels have been installed and the wiring has been completed, you're now ready to test the pixel tree. You'll see in some of the demos that I post and some of my other videos that you can do a whole range of different effects and it really brightens up the yard and creates a, a neat atmosphere for your display. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider watching my other two videos in this series. Part one, which is where I build a leaping light arch in part three, which is where I build a pixel matrix. Thank you for watching.